My name is Dawn McFarlane. The story I'm going to tell you today is called The Lute Player. It's a story from Russia. Once there was a king and a queen, and they lived very happily together. For many years, in peace and in harmony. And then, one day, the king became restless. And so he decided to wage war upon the evil lord of a faraway kingdom. The evil lord was known for his cruelty and his evil. And so the king gathered all of his troops, loaded them up onto a ship, bid his queen farewell, and set sail for the foreign land. And when he arrived, his troops conquered all that they saw, and the king was exultant. But the evil lord had received warning of the king's coming and had secretly amassed his troops elsewhere. And a few days later, the king and his troops were routed and soundly defeated by the evil lord. And the king himself was captured and put into the dungeon at the castle of the evil lord. And every morning, all of the prisoners were taken out of the deep, dank dungeons and driven out into the fields. And there they were driven to work like oxen. They were worked almost to death. And every night the king would return to the dark dungeons exhausted and humiliated. And this went on for three years until finally he befriended one of the guards and managed to smuggle out a letter to the queen. And when the queen received his letter, she was overcome with sorrow and tears fell from her eyes. She had feared for her husband's fate these past three years that he had been away. But now that she had received the letter and knew what ordeal he was going through, her despair overwhelmed her. For in the letter, the king clearly instructed her to sell all of the possessions and all of the lands of the kingdom and to take that great sum of money and to give it to the evil lord as ransom for the king's release. But the queen knew that she could not take this great sum of money to the evil king, for he would just take her to be one of his many wives. And she could not entrust such a great sum with anyone else. And so she paced back and forth in her chambers, and then she had an idea. She cut her beautiful long hair and she shed her queenly robes and donned the simple robes of a traveling minstrel. And she took up her lute and disguised as a minstrel boy, she exited from the castle from a secret passageway and left the castle unseen. And she traveled far and wide and traded her passage on ships for music and song until she finally reached the shores of the evil lord. And she went to the castle of the evil lord and she took up her lute and she played so beautifully on her lute and sang so sweetly that even the birds stopped to listen and the music made its way to the ears of the evil lord. And he summoned that the minstrel boy should be brought before him. Boy, he said, your music soothes me. Stay and play for me for three days and I will give you your heart's desire. And the queen, dressed as the minstrel boy, agreed. And she took up her lute and she played so beautifully and sang so sweetly that the dark hulls of the evil lord seemed to be filled with the light of her song. She sang of war and love, 
And the evil Lord was so entranced that he forgot to eat. And on the second day she played even more beautifully, and again on the third day. And then she stopped. I must take my leave, sire, she said. I am a traveler, and the road is my home. Alas, said the evil lord, but you have done as I asked. You have stayed for three days, so now I must grant your heart's desire. What is it that you wish? I travel alone, said the queen, and sometimes the solitude wears on me. Give me one of your prisoners to travel with me, to be a companion, and I shall be grateful. That is easily done, said the evil lord, and he took the queen down into the bowels of the castle, to the dungeon where the prisoners were held, and there the queen recognized her husband immediately, even though he was scarred and thin from the ordeal. I choose that one, she said, and the king was released from the dungeon of the evil lord. And though the queen had recognized her husband, he did not recognize his wife. And she did not reveal herself to him. And so they traveled together for many days until they stood overlooking the very kingdom that was their own kingdom. And the king turned to the queen disguised as a minstrel and said, I am king over all of these lands. Release me, and I will reward you greatly. Go in peace, said the queen. I desire no reward. But the king protested, you must least, at the very least, let me give a great feast in your honor. To thank you, I need no reward. The queen repeated, go in peace. And so the king traveled the main road to his very own castle, where he knew he would be received with exultant shouts of joy from his people and from his counselors. But the queen knew a shortcut, and she traveled the roundabout way, but got to the castle more quickly than the king. And she hurried through the secret passageway and came into the castle unseen. And she made her way to her chambers and there she shed the minstrel's cloak and donned her royal robes and went to greet her king. And as she stepped out with his advisors to greet him, the king looked at his queen dressed in her finery and he said, Who is this woman who did nothing to save me, nothing to help me escape, nothing to secure my release? From the dungeon of the evil lord. Yes, said her advisors. The advisors of the king said that the queen had mysteriously left the castle the very day she had received his letter. Faithless wife, he fumed and turned his back on her. Well, the queen quickly left the audience of the king and went to her chambers and took up the cloak of the minstrel and the lute and exited through the secret passageway and took up her place in front of the castle of the king, her husband. And she played her music so beautifully and sang so sweetly that the music reached the ears of her husband. And he recognized the voice of the traveling minstrel boy and he said, that, that is the boy who helped me escape. And he ran down to the front entrance of the castle and he took the hand of the minstrel boy and he said, now you cannot refuse me. Now you must let me grant you your heart's desire. And the queen stood before her husband and let fall the cloak of the traveling minstrel and stood in her royal robes and looked into the face of her king, her husband, and said, I desire only you. 
For a moment, the king was speechless. And then he fell down on bended knee and took the hand of the queen and begged for her forgiveness and thanked her for his release. And that night, the king held a great feast, for there were two reasons to celebrate. The king had been released from the dungeon of the evil lord, and he wanted also to celebrate the wisdom of his beloved queen. Thank you. <laughs>